Hello. Well, today I'm uh, going to continue to talk about the uh, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall movies that they all did, or they did together. <clears throat> this is a Dark Passage. Um, <clears throat> this is the first movie not uh, made by uh, uh, Howard Hawks, and this was made by uh, Delmore Davies. Dave's, Dave, yeah. Um, who also wrote the, uh, the movie. Um, this is also based on a book by uh, David uh, Goodis. Um, and it also stars uh, Agnes Moorhead and Tom D'Andrea and Bruce Bennett. Um, Bogart plays a character named... Uh, uh, Vincent Perry, who, um, is he, who he escapes from prison because he was uh, uh, accused of murdering his wife. And uh, he meets a woman, uh, played by Bacall, who helps him. And uh, uh, early in the beginning of the film, and um, We don't actually see Bogart's face until later on. Um, uh, it's there; his face is obscured, and when you do see a picture in the paper of what he looks like, it's obviously not Bogart. Um, but Call plays a woman named uh, Irene Jensen, and. Um, she doesn't believe he uh, killed his uh, wife. She believes uh, that he, uh, you know, uh, he is essentially like an innocent man who went to prison for a crime he didn't commit, just like her father, who died in prison. And uh, throughout the film, people, uh, there are some people who help him, such as uh, a cab, a cabbie, who uh, takes him to a plastic surgeon, um, and then uh, changes his face, which it takes even a while longer to then see what Bogart's face, because he has bandages and has to stay like that for like a week and can't really talk much, and t or can't really talk until then. And um, it's just a, it's like a series of events where there are people that he knew uh, back in his back before he went to prison, who Irene knows and like uh, like seems like Irene knows. Uh, basically everybody around and she's like a, a painter and sculpts and stuff and so she's fairly wealthy and she helps him get on get along on his way but also um somebody who he was gonna stay with a friend of his um is killed and so uh he has to go back to Irene and yeah, everything from there just happens, and a good chunk of it revolves around uh, uh, really him just trying to be undetected and get out of get out of America, try to travel to to wherever he needs to go to like get a new identity and everything because he has a fake name, but you know that will only get him so far. Because uh, his goal is to go to Peru, and there's somebody whom he was in a a, a car at the beginning of the movie, who later comes back around and finds out, uh, uh, finds him because he's been like, you know, um, staking out where. Uh, he's been staying and uh, f 
from there, you know, he's able to figure out basically who did, uh, the, uh, who, who killed his wife and who killed his friend George. Um, Agnes Moorhead plays a woman, I mean, Madge, who's, she's just a, a very annoying woman. She likes to take pleasure in people who are miserable. Um, and then there's a, a guy named Bob who likes uh, Irene and uh, she, uh, <gasps> excuse me, it's a little late, but he basically seems to know who, uh, seems to have known Bob, or Bob, Bob seems to have known uh, Vince beforehand and or know of him and just everybody seems to be wrapped around into all this and it's just very interesting to see how everything unfolds and how uh see if uh you know uh how uh, he finds out who killed his wife and friend and who all else uh, knows about things and what he can do from there on uh uh it's just it's a it's 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 a very good film um this movie didn't do well when it first came out because humphrey bogart was uh, accused of being a communist and so because of that at the time the movie came out it people heard about that were very uncertain about seeing a movie uh uh, with somebody who was accused of like uh, of being a communist at that point so you know uh, I didn't do all that well of the four films these two did together this is one of the ones that didn't really do all that well but the chemistry they have is still strong um, their chemistry is strong in every film they've done together which again, there's just four films, which is kind of shocking and surprising. Um, so yeah, that's the gist of the whole plot. And uh, uh, not seeing Humphrey Bogart's face until like over an hour uh, into a film is quite something. And even before, you know, it was like after like... I can't remember exactly how long it was, but it didn't seem too long. Like, where he had bandages on, and of course, at that point, he couldn't really speak well, or much, uh, or actually at all. He couldn't speak for like a week. He had to write things down while everything healed on his face. But he, uh, like about 30 or so minutes, he, uh, he, uh, he, you know, he, he's in bandages. And up until that, they, you know, they're able to have it to where uh, they obscure his face in shadows or they have the camera be his, you know, you know, it's a, a, yeah, a POV shot. And occasionally you'll see his hands and arms, you know, taking things. And it's just interesting how they were able to go about, you know, just ensuring how... Um, Bogart was there, but you didn't see him for uh, over half of the movie, really, because it's a uh, uh, hundred uh, hundred six minutes, so it's an hour and forty six minutes. So he, you know, I get you see his face after an hour, you know, properly without bandages and such. So for most of the movie, you don't actually get to see his entire face till later, and it's very, it, it's really cool and creative how they were able to achieve all that, just to make sure it is Humphrey Bogart's voice, you just don't get to see his face, they make sure the shadows and everything are obscuring him, and the camera, of course, is him, and uh, I always like when, uh, they go and 
uh, are really creative uh, in t in these kind of times in the forties and stuff because you know these days it's you know you can do makeup and make a lot of makeup and make people look quite different or I guess CGI is an option or whatever or you can just have somebody else stand in and then just have the voice uh, redubbed with the actual actor or actress uh, if you know makeup and all that isn't going to be used it's really a, it's really cool uh, just to see how that uh, how they did that and also uh, the techniques they use just it's just it's just amazing and with the film itself uh, yeah this is a really good movie um it's one that i think is uh actually fairly underrated in some regard you know in both their filmographies um both do an excellent job everybody does an excellent job um Agnes Moorhead is somebody who you don't like in this movie. Um, I know she's played characters like that before, but, you know, uh, uh, or in sense, you know, perhaps, you know, uh, you know, at times, but she, she did an excellent job. Um, uh, she's somebody who I think you could consider definitely a villain. Just her personality and everything. It's just... She's not a very likable character. And, you know, you're rooting for Humphrey Bogart to get away. And for uh, uh, Lauren Bacall's character to not really... You know, not get as wrapped in to everything as she does. But she puts herself out there because she wants to help him. And uh, it's just a very good film. It's one that I really... I think that is something that you, people don't talk about much, obviously. I kind of mentioned that already, but this is definitely an underrated film uh, 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 by these two, you know, not just together, but just in general with their separate, uh, when you look at their careers, this is a film that, while it might be talked about quite a bit these days in terms of like old films and what's really good and everything and i still think it's fairly underrated it's not one that is talked about much and uh particularly um uh the next film they do you know key largo that's one that i often hear about quite a bit and also the big sleep i hear about uh, a good amount and then of course of uh, uh to have and have not the first um but this is sort of like a very much in between obviously this and the, the big sleeper between their first and their last films they did together but this one in particular just seems to be like you know it gets talked about a little bit but not as much as the other three and um uh it may not be the best of the three or of the four i guess i should say um maybe one could say in a sense it could be perhaps weaker or the weakest, I guess, of the four. But even then, whatever the weakest one, whichever you would point put as at the when you're ranking these four, whichever would be at the bottom. I think they're all great. They're all great in their own way. The acting is fantastic. The writing, direction, everything about this film is amazing. Um it's a it, it is a shame that uh, it didn't do the best you know business wise when it was first released in the uh, in the forties but you know that happens sometimes um you know films like uh, it's a wonderful life it that became a classic later on it wasn't a huge uh, bona fide hit at first you know i mean it did get a n number of accolades like at the Academy Awards, it was nominated for, like, Best Picture and such, but, you know, that's an instance of a film. Didn't do well, really, 
uh, at first, or at least what you would uh, think about a film like A Beautiful, or It's a Wonderful Life, would do. But, you know, you know, it's revered as a classic. And I, uh, this film seems to be, you know, viewed as a classic as well, but it just, you know, isn't listed or mentioned as much as the other three films they did, you know, the two before this film and the one after. Um, it's unfortunate, but, you know, that does happen. Um, I've seen all these films before, like on TV. They're all very good. Um, and, uh, yeah. This is a movie that is definitely uh, worth a watch if you haven't seen it before. Um, <clears throat> and if you have seen it before, I think it's worth a watch, you know, just to rewatch it again. It's one that is a fantastic film uh, from beginning to end. And it's always interesting just to see how the story unfolds. You know, even if you know what happens at the end, it still is like just getting to the end is kind of a, obviously like a write-in of its own. And the techniques they use in the beginning to hide Bogart's face so you don't see it and everything, it's just, it's, it's really cool. Um, so uh, on a story level and also a, a technical level of the techniques they use and everything, it's just really fantastic, you know. You know, still to this day, as well as also uh, back in the 40s. It's really cool uh, to see unfold. But um, yeah, I hope uh, this was sufficient enough. I know I kind of rambled a bit, sort of repeated myself a little bit here and there. Um, it is a little late uh, as I'm recording this, but, you know, I also finished re-watching it not that long ago and it's still sort of fresh in my mind and you know sometimes when that happens it's like you know you kind of want to sort of say so many things but then it's like you, when it comes out it you, you gotta make sure it is sort of uh intelligible it doesn't just have a bunch of words flying out you know i hope it's this is a uh, pretty good um yeah, this is a great film. Uh, Dark Passage is worth a watch if you haven't seen it before and you enjoy classic films. Uh, <clears throat> I don't believe it's all that expensive to get on Blu-ray or DVD. Uh, I don't know if it would be streaming somewhere. I don't want to say it isn't, but... Uh, if you have a Turner Classic Movies, they sometimes play films like this here and there. Um, it's a film noir, too, so um, I know they like to play film noirs, I believe, on Sunday, like Sunday afternoons or so. Which isn't bad, necessarily, but still. Uh, it's uh, kind of cool. So, you know... Uh, Find ways to uh, find, uh, try to find this wherever you can. Uh, if you're interested in uh, classic films, uh, um, yeah, if you like Bogart or Bacall or anybody involved in this film, uh, I would say it's worth a watch. Uh, at least once, just to see if you like it. And if you have seen it before, uh, what do you think? Do you enjoy this movie? Do you dislike it? Do you think it's the best of the four films they've done? Is it the... Would you put it at the bottom? You know, not necessarily maybe it being the worst, or but you'd rank that the, just the lowest. Um, or do you think it's the best? You know. Uh, you can say what you think about it in the comments if you'd like, or... Uh, yeah, I hope all of you are uh, doing well. Hope you all have a great day. Hope you've all had a great week. 
hope you all have a great weekend and uh, see you all next time.